have three new Ryobi cordless vacuums here. All of them are running on the OnePlus 18 volt platform. We have a one gallon version, we have the three gallon, and we have the six gallon. Now, all of these are wet dry vacs. Uh, they differ in size as far as hoses and some accessories and things like that. There's some commonality between them, but let's go ahead and dive in and look at the features on each. Uh, I'll go ahead and share the model numbers. So the first model number on the one gallon is the PCL733B would be the bare tool or K if you're gonna get a kit. And then on the three gallon is the PCL734 and then the six gallon is going to be the PCL735. So pretty easy, 733, 734 and the 735. Now let's take a look first at the little guy, which is the 733 or the one gallon version of the wet dry vac. Uh, you see one thing that is common across all these is there is some hose management thought about. Don't have to worry about cord management. There is no power cord. But as far as the hose, I like the fact that we have clips there, keeps everything out of the way. It's all nice and compact. There's a place for everything and you don't have to have it dangling or loop it through things, anything like that. Now let's clip this back up. And let's get a general size of this. So with the hose, taking into account the hose on each side, you're looking at about 15 inches wide. And then as far as the depth on this, probably looking at close to about 11 inches from the front of this hose to the back of the unit. And then height is gonna be right at a foot. So about 11 and three quarters of an inch. And that's even with the battery. And I'm running a four amp hour battery on here. On a vacuum, you don't wanna to skimp too much running a two amp hour or one and a half amp hours, just not gonna give you run time and you're probably gonna see a lot of degradation in power as well. So I would recommend at least a four amp hour when running any sort of vacuum. Very simple on off switch right here on the top and that's basically all you get. You don't get a high low or anything else, just an on or off. Uh, we get a crevice tool that's right here. Again, a place for it right there on the side. And if you do have an additional accessory, you have another knob right there on the top where you could place something there as well. But as far as this one, the only accessory that comes with it is the crevice tool. Now you get a one and a quarter inch hose. So in other words, you're to hook up to your accessories, things like that, it's gonna be one and a quarter inches. And you get kind of a cone shaped or a funnel shaped, reverse cone shape, whatever you wanna call that. So you get a taper right here on the front of this nozzle. So not a true one and a quarter inch there, probably one inch there escaping at the end, but a one and a quarter inch hose. And the length on this is going to be five foot. Now that's going to be obviously stretched out is gonna give you the five feet because you see right here in this format, probably looking at a couple of feet, but it does stretch out where you can get a full five feet of extension. You do get some movement here. So if you need to aim it towards the back, towards the front, upwards, whatever's gonna make the, the best of the situation, you can rotate that. You can also remove this hose, little eighth turn, pull that off. You can also turn it around here and we have a blower side right here. So if we needed to hook up, this end's not gonna go in here, but your other end will actually stick in there and you can actually use it now as a blower, whether you're actually using it to blow or sometimes you'll get obstructions in your hose and you can use that blower portion to actually reverse that, push all that junk back out and start vacuuming again. Two clips on either side or a single clip on either side will lift up the whole head and then a quick eighth turn of the filter will get the filter off. And by the way, this is a wet dry filter that you can also wash as well. So you can get this wet if you're actually sucking up wet stuff, you can leave this filter on, but be sure to take that off and dry it out once you are complete. You're gonna get about 45 CFM on this and decibel range is gonna be right at 75 as far as sound. And if you'll look at the back of this, this does connect to the Ryobi link system. So if you have the link wall system, this can actually clip right there on the wall and be out of the way for you. You don't have to put it on a shelf or anything like that. It will hang right there on the link system. And let's get a weight with the four amp hour battery, eight pounds dead on. So eight pounds for the vacuum and the battery without obviously any contents from uh, sucking anything up. And we'll test some more things here in one moment. Now we'll take a look at the PCL734, which is the three gallon version of the wet dry vac. Again, again, running on the 18 volt battery, got another four amp hour in here. 
and you'll notice right away hose management on this so there's no hoses dangling anywhere in fact a little better than the smaller one gallon version so, so it tucks away right up here behind the handle so the handle kind of closes in on it as well keeping that out of the way so i like to see that and then if you need to use this obviously you can just pull it out and use that as you need it we get the same one and a quarter inch as far as diameter but we do get another foot of use so we get a six foot hose on this one but again one and a quarter inches and it looks like we get that uh, one inch output right there as well so nice hose clip to keep things out of the way we also get uh, not only on and off but we get a low and a high as well so give us a little boost as we need it with up to 50 cfms of power and we get a floor sweep tool as you see right here on the front of the unit and then up here under the hose, tucked up under the hose is a crevice tool. Now I did notice, I wish it had you know, some sort of clip where we kind of hold that in there. I know the hose is holding it in and the handle, but still I would love to see some sort of clip holding that in. Still, I like the fact we've got a place for the crevice tool, a place for the floor sweep tool, keeping everything in and out of the way. Just like on the smaller version, a clip on either side is gonna hold it together. I lift this up. Get the same style filter, a little eighth of a turn, and that comes off. It's a washable, wet-dry filter. So again, we can leave that pleated filter on there whenever we're using it in wet or dry situations. Just highly recommend that you dry that out once you get it wet and leave your vacuum apart while it's drying out. Three-gallon capacity, and we'll be testing that soon. And just like on the one-gallon, although a little bit different, uh, the link system is here on the bottom with a locking system. You see we have a button right there where it actually unlocks the blade. So this blade system is actually gonna lock on the top of one of the link uh, storage containers, or you can lock it into the grid system on the wall as well. Now, just an idea of measurement on this. Uh, so width wise, right at 18 inches and height, uh, you're looking at right uh, 11 inches tall, even with the battery. And then width here is gonna be about 10 and a half inches. So in some aspects, smaller than the one gallon, but of course just a little bit wider, a little bit more power and a lot more capacity. And by the way, you also get an additional place up here to store another accessory if you need to. So about 11 and three quarters of a pound. So 11 pounds, 11 ounces with the battery. And finally, we have the big dog, the PCL 735. And finally, we have the big dog, the PCL 735. This is the six gallon wet dry vac, again, running on the 18 volt one plus platform. On this one, I do have a six amp hour battery in here, uh, just because the larger the vacuum, the more you wanna use it, the bigger the runtime of battery or bigger amp hour battery, I would recommend. So six or nine amp hour would be great for a vacuum like this, especially if you're utilizing it to its capacity. Uh, you'll notice right away a lot different setup here. We have the large uh, all-terrain wheels, if you, if you will, here in the middle. So it kind of spins freely and is nice and balanced on those two wheels. And then we have swivel casters on either side. Makes this traversing very easy. Um, and those larger wheels does seem to help it, you know, roll around very easy and the casters just kind of guide it to keep it balanced when it's offset a little bit. Um, just like the others, we have a place for everything. We have two extensions, one on either side here that are clipped into the top. And then we have a hose that actually goes around on the top of the machine as well. And this is a larger one and a seven eighths inch hose. And I believe length on that is seven feet. So we get a seven foot one and seven eighths inch hose. And then the additional accessories like the floor sweep and like the crevice tool sit right in here in these elastic bands here on the end of the tool or the end of the vacuum. And we have a space for two more things, whether we want to put these extensions there, we could do that, or we could put additional hose accessory attachments there on the end as well. Up on the top, we get a high low. So we don't just have a power on or off. We have low and we have 
Then we have high actually boosting up that CFM up to a possible of 80 CFM at about 66 decibels. As we mentioned, uh, up to six gallon capacity on this and we will test that to see uh, what type of fluid capacity we actually get out of this. Now we can see here, we're running a much larger canister filter, pleated filter on this one. And again, it should be uh, washable and usable wet. On this one also, you're just gonna get uh, the inside here about a quarter turn and that's going to then slide off and then we can pull this cap off if we need to as well clean out our filter as we need it put it back on and put the cap back on and we're good to go so again find the groove and then about a quarter turn and that locks into place so no threading it on just find the groove quarter turn we're locked in and ready to go all right, here we are to the really scientific portion of our test where we have a floor mat from a vehicle and just, I know what looks like, did we just sweep the shop floor and, uh, and dump it on this floor mat? Well, yes, that's exactly what we did. Uh, so real life scenario, right? You're tracking stuff in your vehicle all the time. So is the one gallon a good idea for typical automotive cleanup as far as carpets go? Well, let's find out. I think the best tool is probably what we have. I'll be honest with you. I thought we weren't going to do that well with it. Obviously, these few things were, were too big that obviously spanned across and probably get lodged in there if it did suck it up. But anyway, not surprised at that at all. Uh, but I am surprised how well that did clean that up that quickly. Let me borrow the tool from over here. So is there still some left in there? Yes, you know, we could beat that out and vacuum it up some more, get it cleaner, but still very impressed that the one gallon was able to do what it could do that quickly. Not bad. And now let's try out the three gallon Pretty much the same performance numbers, uh, a little bit different, a little bit of, of a boost here, I think by some, I think by like five CFM, uh, and we'll go ahead and use the floor tool here. And you know what, nope, we're gonna use just this to vacuum up the most and then we'll use the floor sweep and we'll do it on high. So again, like the one gallon, there's some residual left there that we could continue to uh, either vibrate out or shake it out, continue to vacuum. But as far as performance, it did very, very well. I was not expecting these two uh, lower end or, or smaller units to be able to provide that much power, to be able to provide that much suction. Here we'll get our hose off and then here on the front is where our suction is. We have a high low up here on the front. So we'll go ahead and we have a clip that will lock it in. So it's locked in so we can pull this around without it coming free. And we're gonna use our floor tool here in just a moment. So I'll turn it on high. And that is not the case. So that is not the suction side where the switch is. So now we have created a huge mess. And understand that depending on where you position the power head is gonna determine which side your suction is on.
So here's our suction. The blower is actually on the power head. The suction is coming right out of the container. Now we'll try to clean up our mess. Okay, after cleaning up our mess, great job, obviously with the larger hose capacity, with the more power uh, from the actual more powerful vacuum, it does a very quick job of cleaning up. I, I do wish that that was a little better floor sweep, that that kind of groove pattern, I don't think does real well. I would love to see like a, uh, a bristle brush or something like that and make it look cleaner as far as on automotive carpet. That's not a big deal, but suction wise does a great job. Okay, now let's do a wet test or a water test. So we got a five gallon bucket, pretty much full of water, one gallon wet dry vac. Obviously it's not gonna pull up that entire five gallons. And what's gonna happen? Is it going to shut off or is it gonna just start spewing water everywhere? Well, let's find out. And if you're wondering how we're gonna measure, we can do that by weight, right? I believe a gallon of water is 8.34 pounds. And so we can put our vacuum on here. So we're still at right at eight pounds and then we'll zero out. So now we're net zero. Okay, it's pretty much stopped. It's not sucking anymore. So I'm just gonna turn it off, let it rest. And I don't believe we got anywhere near a gallon because a gallon would be eight pounds. Oh, wait a second. That looks like we got more than a gallon. Now let's put our hose back on here. 12 pounds, five and a half ounces. I'm not sure how we got a gallon and a half of water in there, but let's actually see. Shall we, so we should zero back out once we pour this back in. Less the water weight in that filter that we're gonna lose. Note to self, there's a lot of water and water weight in that filter. So now we should zero out. So it looks like we're weighing about six ounces heavier. Still, the fact is that if water weighs 8.34 pounds, then we had about a gallon and a half of water in here because we had right at 12 pounds. So eight and four is 12, so a gallon and a half. So we went above and beyond a gallon of water. Impressive, did not think that. I thought we'd get three quarters of a gallon. Let's move on to the three gallon. So 11 pounds, 11 ounces. So 11 and three quarters of a pound. There's our starting weight and let's zero out. So now we're zero. 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 Pretty much stopped sucking, uh, so we'll stop it right there. Looks like 21 pounds, three ounces, not quite three gallons. So this is where I thought we'd be, you know, two and a half gallons, two and three quarter gallons, something like that. Uh, three gallons at eight pounds would be 24 pounds. Eight and eight, 16, another eight is 24. Uh, so we're not quite there. We're about three pounds off. Um, so not quite half a gallon, so we're more than two and a half gallons, so not bad, not bad at all. Again, a lot of times I think you're, you're short on capacity on some of these wet dries a lot more than that, but that's where I expected the one gallon to be, not to be over a gallon. So now we're zeroed out on the six gallon, and just let's uh, think about this for a moment. So six gallons should bring us to about 48 pounds. We have a 75 pound capacity. Should not be a problem there, so again, 8.34, so eight times six is going to be 48, and then another 0.3 times six, so another 1.8 pounds. So right at 50 pounds would be six gallons. Let's see if we get there. 
We'll go as fast as we can, so we'll go high. So I don't know if you saw that when we started spitting out the blower, I would say we're full. In fact, we hit the bottom of the barrel as soon as it did that. Uh, and it looks like we're a little short of probably a, a gallon short. So 41 point, I don't know, 10, 40, 40 point, something like that. 41 pounds was what it was a second ago here. Got to measure with the hose. So yeah, we're at 41 pounds or so. So we're still over five gallons of capacity on this six gallon. Probably could have pulled in a little bit more. Uh, still a good amount on a six gallon vacuum to be able to pull over five gallons. Well, performance wise, we were impressed by all three. We really were. We did not think we would get the performance we got out of any of these, uh, either in the, the dry vacuuming or even in the wet capacity. Uh, so kudos to Ryobi for that. Um, obviously not stellar performances across the board on everything, but, but just better performance than what we anticipated. Uh, prices wise, and, and let me remark on that, meaning could you clean up a vehicle with the one gallon? Yes, you could. Would it do a better job with the six gallon? Yes, we just got more power here and a little bit more power here. Probably just because we have a high low switch on this one. I bet the head unit is probably a lot the same, especially since we're running the same filter on these two. Regardless, you are getting a little step up in performance in the three gallon, but very good job of cleanup on all three. Pricing, uh, you're looking at $79 for the bare tool uh, for the one gallon unit. And then for the three gallon unit, you're looking at $179 for the kit with a four amp hour battery and a charger. I did not see bare price on this yet for the bare tool. And then for the six gallon, the PCL 735, uh, $149 for the bare tool and $199 for the kit with the four amp hour battery and the charger. Three year warranty on all, all three of these. So you get a three year warranty uh, regardless of which one you get here. Uh, you can find them at Home Depot. I believe the one gallon's already out. Uh, I believe the six gallon's already out as well. I don't believe the three gallon has hit the shelves yet. Uh, we'll have links in the descriptions on all these. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And hey, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But otherwise, would you hit that like and subscribe button? Have a great day and keep smiling.